So uh, I was just giving a little bit of a uh, uh, description of what Minx is, but obviously you are much more intimately familiar with it. Um, so I'd love to kick it off with uh, having you tell us a little bit All about right. what um, Minx, Minx is. is a show on HBO Max, and it is based in the 70s. Uh, Alan Rappaport came up with this fantastic idea um, of a kind of, kind of a precursor to the sex positive movement in the 80s. Um, and it's about... Ophelia Love Bond's character, Joyce, and um, Jake Johnson's character, who are kind of this unlikely duo that meet. Uh, one is trying to come in creatively, one's trying to come in commercially, and they form Minx, which is this uh, ladies' interest magazine. <laughs> uh, that is that is a way to put it. That is a way to put it. I've uh, I've gotten to check out uh, the first wow, four man. episodes of the series so far. Uh, yeah, um, and I'm a huge fan. Um, so I was really excited uh, when this all came together for us to get to do this. Uh, you have described this show as uh, I believe the quote was um, a high oh, class raunchy. Did I? Did I? <laughs> um, yes. Um. Would you say that that's correct? And if so, can you explain what that means? Yeah, in, sure. In I mean, when I read the script, I want to say March 2020, before lockdown, um, I, I read the role and I read the project and was just like, I need to be involved in this project. It is hysterical. Like the writing is, is just next level. Uh, Ellen, when I finally met Ellen, I was like, I get it. I'm like, you just create these fantastic, this fantastic world. Um, it's, it's the highest quality of content and writing uh, in, in my eyes and is not gratuitous. You know, it's not like, oh, there's a person's body part. You know, it's, it's just, it's, I, I think it's just like the highest form of great comedy. And I, that, that's what I meant by it, but while still maintaining those raunchy elements. Uh, you know, you, in your career, you're no stranger to uh, a shirtless, <laughs> a shirtless shot here and there. This is a this is a very revealing uh, role for you. Uh, it's yeah, yeah. I, I want to talk about the emotion as well, but it's a very revealing, uh, totally physical role for you. Um, talk to me about yep. your comfort level with that. Uh, what the discussions were ahead of time, because uh, again, to reiterate for you all, Minx uh, coming up to HBO Max March seventeenth. Uh, is about the creation of uh, this, uh, the first female, uh, first erotic magazine that's catering yeah. towards females. Uh, and uh, Taylor's character <laughs> is the first cover star, uh, which I will be showing that cover in just a moment. Um, but uh, yeah, tell, tell us about yeah. that aspect of this and what, what, that's, what that's like, because spoiler alert, uh, a lot of, see yeah, a, a, a lot of Taylor. In the first few episodes. Um, I feel like a prereq for anything I do, they're always like, how are you comfortable with your shirt off? And I, I usually just say yes. Um, but this time around, uh, the breakdown for the, for the project was you know, like, must be okay to, to, you know, must be okay with nudity, must be okay with all this stuff. And, you know, I think they did a really good job at kind of vetting the people that they worked with that to create a safe environment. Because, you know, I think once you bring together a bunch of folks that, a bunch of creatives that are there for the project, they're not there for anything else, then you can start playing and having a good time. Um, and that's exactly what happened on set. Like it was next, next to, you know, shooting, uh, you know, the Kissing Booth movies, like this was probably the best set I've ever been on. Um, I'm on the level quality of talent wise and then also just like comedy like I love love comedy and quality quality comedy um so yes to your question it is a very revealing project when I first got um the audition for it and got to meet with Rachel and Ellen you know it was it was just like, kind of straight to the point we got over it and then we got into acting and talking about creative stuff um lots of hair pieces lots of lots of <laughs> penises lots of boobs lots of butt lots of chest like there's just it's so 70s it's so 70s i think that they did such a great job at really committing to the period and not straying from it one bit um 
and yeah, you'll you'll see a lot of things. You'll see a lot of things. That's all I can say. I mean, I don't want to ruin it, but yeah, it's, it's HBO, baby. <laughs> yes, it most it most definitely is. Uh, and talk to me about uh, you, you know I'm gonna do my best to show this uh, on my computer. This will be on EW.com as well as part of uh, our discussion here. I'm gonna do my best to show this cover. <laughs> Please ignore like my 900 unread emails. Um, but this is the first cover of Minx, yes. um, which uh, has uh, your character, Shane, as the cover star. Um, you, uh, again, you'll see it on EW.com. I'm not going to hold the computer up the whole time. But uh, you've, got the, you've got the 70s shag uh, hair. Um, talk to me about getting into the period. Uh, all the other hair and other pieces yes. uh, aside, what was it like to just get in terms of like the face up? Uh, prepared for the yeah, I, think, I think that's the that was the most fun I love having a project where you have some kind of doing like whether it's you know singing playing the guitar dancing you know 70s and then all the stuff that comes along with that so I was fully supported with uh Carly who's our who's our head of um hair and makeup and she you know kind of took me through the entire process you know going to the special effects studio um fitting the hair pieces and when we shot the pilot in 2019? Yeah. Oh my God. Wait, hold on. No. 2020. When it shot in 2000, it's been so long. <laughs> and what is time? What uh, is time right now? 2020, it was not picked up. So I went in, I had my hair, it was long, and then waited maybe eight or nine months. I buzzed my head, buzzed all my hair off. And then they're like, hey, we got, we got picked up. So now we're going back to shoot September, October, November that everyone was shooting. And so we did, then we actually had to go to like the premier wig maker in Beverly Hills. They, um, they put this uh, like, like cellophane wrap around my head and then traced my hairline and then they worked their magic. So the first episode is my hair like with some extensions. And then um, like, I think episode four, maybe I think that you saw is not my hair. It is a uh, full on wig. So, I mean, when I got in, like, I think by the time I was in after all the, um, all of their prepping with like Oscar and Jake and, um, and Jessica, like I felt there's a lot of facial hair going on. And so I was growing out my sideburns. Like I was ready. I was like ready to 70s it up. And then I get there and Ellen and Rachel said, you know, I think we're gonna have you clean shaven and you know, the hair just gonna be a little bit, a little bit longer. And I didn't, you know, didn't have like any extra chest hair. So, which was, uh, which was pretty funny. Um, and so every day in the chair, it was just like getting ready to do, it almost felt like you're doing a play. Like you're so re far removed from, from yourself and from real life because everything from like the shag carpet to the, the paisley couch to the, um, just dim lit bar areas, just everything felt like you were walking into a different world. So it, I, you automatically... <laughs> didn't, I mean, for me, I don't want to speak on anyone's behalf, but I automatically walked in going, okay, this is not real life. Whereas, you know, sometimes you walk onto other sets and you're like, oh, this is like a, a variation of me, or this is so close to me. Like, oh, this is easy. Like, yeah, all right. This was, like, Shane is totally not like Taylor. <laughs> and so you know, it, was, it was, uh, it was, I would say it was easy to get in the character with all the support around me. So uh, I'm really grateful for that. Now, I now, were there, you mentioned, like, not going with the with the facial hair, uh, the extra, like, chest hair and stuff like that. Were there extremes that they tried? And they were, were, were you, like, super 70s at one point in, in showing that off? And they were like, no, 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 we're not going oh, man. Was it I always a clear vision? My phone was not, like, on, you know, doing the, the, the live because I would show you. Um, so one of the show creators, uh, Dan, Dan, he has really long hair. And when I went into, after the, after the wig fitting, they, you know, they put it on me and then they had to give me a trim. But Ellen walked in and was like, oh my God, you look like Dan. He's like, we have to, we have to show Dan. I think Dan was on a call. He was like having lunch, he was doing his thing. And so Ellen and I just like rushed into his office and he was like, whoa. And, and we looked so much like took a picture. Uh, I wish I had that to show you too, because it's on here. But we had a picture and, um, it was just so funny. So it was like down to my mid back and then she trimmed it up and made it, you know, period appropriate. So it, we didn't go, we didn't go too far. I mean, I would say with 
other body hair areas, there was a lot of play with that, but uh, not too much up here. It was like, which hard hat to put over the hair? Uh, your character is a firefighter uh, who has aspirations to uh, get involved in modeling and, and, and such. Uh, how else would you describe Shane? Because there, there's, there's a, <laughs> I'm going to leave that up to you. Shane. How would you describe Shane? Um, Shane to me feels like this, I mean, he's from, he's from um, the Palisades, like went to Palisades High, very surfery. Um, I feel like he's the kid in high school or the guy in high school that was like, very attractive and so didn't really have to work too hard and didn't have to have too many aspirations and it had and it stuck with him um and he became a fireman and he loves doing that but he's kind of stunted when it comes to emotional maturity and so he kind of had this relationship thing happen on the show with one of uh one of the other characters and he just falls head over heels you know he's not he just like love struck um, by this girl. And he just, he has a lot of growing to do. So that's, I feel like that's, that's the, the gist I could tell you without giving it away. Um, this is uh, a character who I think, again, not to give anything away, but there's, there's depth there despite the, at least, seeming first appearance of of vapid's not even the right word it seems like there's not a lot going empty, on there yeah. but there really is and what was the key to you to yeah what was the key to you of getting that right because i was talking with another coworker of mine uh who uh has been a fan of the episodes they've seen so far and we were discussing like how it, that's a really tough thing to get right because you don't want you yeah. don't want it to go too far one direction and and you don't uh, you you manage to you manage to finagle yeah, uh, you know, that situation correctly. Yeah, I, I really love um, Ashton Kutcher as Kelso, and you know in that in that project. And yes, that's you know it's a sitcom and it's heightened and everything's a little bit extra. Uh, but I felt like he was still able to play those moments, you know, those emotional moments. And like I love that '70s show. Um, but when prepping this guy, I feel like that's the the biggest problem people have um, is when they see a character, like they, they see that this is a, you know, stereotypical, you know, dumb blonde or dumb jock kind of thing. They just go straight to, they don't have emotion. They don't understand the world. They are unintelligent. Um, and I knew that from the beginning that he wasn't that, you know? Um, and I would say, you know, I worked, worked with my, with, with my coach or with my friends. And, you know, I think the best part about acting is that it is such a community-based thing. And like, you know, a lot of people like do their work and then they go out, like they don't discuss it with anybody, but I love having the discussions about it. And as an athlete myself, like I know, I knew these kind of guys, you know, I knew these, these guys growing up and I still kind of know them. And just because they're not incredibly intelligent and maybe they're not emotionally secure with themselves, they still have emotions and they still process things like, you know, uh, mature adults would, they just do it in a different way. And so I think the biggest thing was grounding him, making him likable and also playing against the line. Um, because sometimes, you know, there are lines that you like this, th this line means this. And you're like, yeah, but it's so much funnier if he thinks it's this way. And then the actually, the funny part is the character responding to him, not understanding what that actually means. So it, it's a, it was a finessing of finding all of that. And also just playing with, um, like with Rachel and Ellen and, and also um, Ophelia's character uh, as Joyce, you know, talking about it, like, oh, what if we did this? What if we did that? And like, just laugh our butts off. Because I think also when um, Ophelia and I work together, there has to be, as you know, like, as we talked earlier, like the, the show is very scandalous and there has to be that level of trust between you and the actors that you're with, especially if, you know, there's naked people around and, you know, you're not covered up and then you have a conversation and you're like, okay, I need to respect this person's space, but then also talk about the project and, you know, about the scene. So it was, it was a, it was a bunch of things and 
and I, I was just so supported on set. And um, I mean, there, I, no, I, I don't want to say, it. I don't want to say, it. never mind. I don't, I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> um, as we've mentioned, uh, uh, nudity is a part of this. And, and traditionally, right. that's always meant female nudity. And a, a big message of the show, a big, a big message of the show and what the characters in the show are trying to convey is that like women uh, deserve and, and even though maybe stereotypically we're always uh, depicted as not being interested in that, like that there's a room for, there's room for women right. to want to enjoy that. Uh, this show is going to join a long line of recent shows um, that have been not afraid of uh, a lot, uh, not, not just from one character, but many characters, a lot of full frontal male nudity. What is your what is your thoughts on the fact that that's becoming more common? It's becoming a little bit more equal in terms of like the nudity we are seeing yeah. in in projects. I, mean, I think it's great. I think it's great that everyone has the option now, and it's not so thirty seventy or ninety ten. Um, and it's interesting to have conversations with you know TV and film. I'll just audience members, like friends that are consumers of content. That'll be like, that'll say to me, did you watch that Sunday's episode of insert show here? There were so like, there were so many dicks. Like, I don't even, I don't even know why. I don't know why there were so many. And it's, and it's the women that are saying this to me. And I'm like, I didn't catch it. I mean, I didn't watch the episode, you know, and everyone has their own, their own POV on it, you know, and some people, some women are like, it's about goddamn time that this is happening. And uh, other women are, aren't into it. It's, it's all over the place, but I'm, I'm all for it. I mean, it's, if, if, if the, if the project and the scene call for it, why not? Um, but I think just to throw a bare chested woman or, you know, ass, ass out guy into the scene without it making sense, then it just becomes gratuitous. And then I think it takes away from the quality of the content. Yeah. Uh, on a personal level, like, are you are you prepared <laughs> for the world to see a, a lot of you and and or other parts that are, are, are not you but look uh, like you? I mean, I guess so. I mean, it's funny going from playing like an eighteen year old, seventeen and eighteen year old kid a few years ago, and now being in a different type of project. Uh, I know a lot of uh, a lot of folks that like those movies will probably maybe their parents or the, maybe their, their parents will like them the, the show more than them uh it's i don't know I'm, I'm all uncomfortable right now no 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 i'm not um i think it's going to be exciting fun and just like a wow moment because i think the show is already so wow and it's it's seriously the most fun i I have not been this excited about, I like, guess apart from me being up in, in the project, I've not been this excited about a, a show in a, in a long time. And I haven't read a pilot like the pilot I read um, from Ellen. And uh, I just think, I think the world's just gonna really, really enjoy it. And it'll be, I think, I think it'll be, oh man, shocking at first. I think like my, my, my mom sees it. Like I think when my mom sees it is when I will be <laughs> a little a little uh, freaked out. I mean that's fair, but the acting is super strong, and like you said, there's a reason for all of it at every point uh, that it happens, and and at the points when it is shocking, I think it's meant to yeah. be shocking because you know that's a commentary on if it was a woman, it would be so commonplace, and if it's a man. It's, yeah. it's, oh my God, what's happening? And, you know, I think we are moving to a place where that's not the case. And that's kind of the point of the show is that like, you know, uh, a quote that Jake's character says to Ophelia's character is, you know, that's not very feminist to think that only men should have uh, views, <laughs> views of, a, of the right. naked members of the opposite sex, uh, to put it yeah. very uh, technically, I guess. <laughs> Um, but that's that's the exciting thing about the show, and your work on it is so strong. Um, and I I'm so excited yeah. for other people to see it. Uh, is there anything else about Minx uh, or anything else that you'd love for everyone watching to know before we uh, before we peace out here and make sure that people go to yeah. ew.com to see the cover, uh, which I'll show one more yeah, time before we, we just log off here. That, your your last remark about about it kind of flipping flipping the switch on everything. I think 
Jessica and Lennon's character do such a great job at adding that kind of commentary of, you know, that years, that years and years that we've seen of just men commenting on like the female body in, pro in, in, in TV shows and, and in movies. Um, now we kind of get to reverse it where we have, you know, I, I, let me first say, I am probably Lennon Parham's biggest fan. We've never met, but I've watched all of her stuff she's done. I think she's one of the funniest people out there. And I mean, and then of course, everyone on the show too, that I've, that I've got to learn and meet and like, I've been fans of for a long time, but Lennon is just one of those people. And so she, she just kills me like in, in all the episodes that you're, you're going to, you're going to fall in love with everybody on the show. I promise you. Um, that's all. I, I, I just can't wait for everyone to see it. Yeah. Well, I can't either. Uh, for those of you at home that can't wait, uh, it's HBO max launching March 17th. Uh, with two episodes dropping weekly uh, after that. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Taylor, thank you so much Thanks for, for joining us uh, here. Oh, um, I'm yeah. going to show your cover one more time. But again, you can go to EW.com later this afternoon and it'll be living there <laughs> in a much better form than here Every on time. my computer. Uh, looking like 70s uh, a 70s dream. Uh, love it so much. <laughs>